This is Illinois Extension's Voice of the Wild. A new wild voice in just a moment. So find someplace quiet, take a deep breath, and enjoy. This owl is very easy to overlook. I and five others, all experienced birders, two of whom were ornithologists wielding a radio antenna, once rambled in circles beneath one without seeing it. The antenna was beeping to tell us that we were right on top of the bird's transmitter, and we nonetheless spent 15 minutes without noticing the bird directly above us. In our defense, it was in a bit of a strange place. A quarter of the way up a pine tree instead of the more typical daytime roost for the species, safely out of sight in a red cedar or thicket of honeysuckle, typically close to the trunk and a little above eye level. If you can find them, they're an adorable sight, with a round head and white streaks on a tawny brown body. But don't let their cuteness fool you. Though small, they are fierce, certainly the worst nightmare of a wood mouse or vole. This is the northern saw-wet owl, Agolius acaticus, from the owl family Strigidae. Much like the scissor grinder cicada, the saw-wet's name is an anachronism. The activity that secured the saw-wet's name to our mutual understanding, the honing of saw teeth with a whetstone, has long since disappeared into history. Were it named now, it might be named the alarm clock owl. In Illinois, we're unlikely to hear this song, as it is generally reserved for attracting mates when the bird returns to the north in the spring. But while the bird is here between October and March, we might get lucky and hear one of its other vocalizations, either their whining call, or their skew call. Altogether, here's the northern saw-wet owl again. Thank you to the Macaulay Library at the Cornell Lab for our bird sounds. And thank you for tuning in to learn a new wild voice with Illinois Extension.